My name is Lester Spence. Uh, thank you for having me today, albeit virtually. I wish I could be there with you to partake in this conversation, one of the most important conversations I think that people across the country are having. How do we evaluate Obama given his first 100 days in office? I, among, I like many of you, experienced a great deal of excitement when Obama was elected, but also trepidation given the challenges that I knew he faced. What I want to do briefly within 10 minutes is talk about Obama's successes, focusing on his executive orders, and then talking about the challenges that Obama faces and whether and what we have to do kind of sort of to push Obama to deal with these challenges in a different way. So executive orders, right? So there are a number of ways in which Obama, by way of executive order, really signaled a change from the previous, previous administration. So whereas the Bush administration placed a high value on secrecy, Obama places a high value on openness. So one of the first things he did was he actually reversed changes made to the Presidential Records Act. Uh, President Bush made it so that not only could he, not only was the default for a Freedom of Information Act request secrecy, that is withholding information, but he gave previous presidents the ability to, um, to uh, deny Freedom of Information Act requests. I think that this, is a, this was a tremendous blow to the practice of democracy in as much as a democracy really requires openness for, to work. So Obama actually reversed these changes. In fact, he made it such that even in the case where he attempts to deny a Freedom of Information Act request, there is a member of the staff, I believe it's the uh, attorney general, who has to, in effect, okay Obama's denial. So there's a checks and balance system, system at work. Uh, I think that's really important. Um, he allowed for stem cell research. Uh, this is tremendously important as far as developing uh, solutions to a number of the health crises that we face. Uh, he reversed an executive order banning project labor agreements. So the previous administration was not a big fan of labor, obviously, and passed an executive order banning project labor agreements. Project labor agreements uh, are agreements that require certain types of contracts to be filled by union unionized firms, right? So by banning that, he's basically hamstringing labor. What Obama does by reversing that ban is place labor, is give labor uh, or give hardworking Americans, hardworking union Americans, the ability to help rebuild the country. And that's something that we really sorely need. Right? He lists the ban, internationally speaking, there are a couple of things I touch on. Uh, he lists the ban on funding um, for groups providing abortions, right? So family planning, the world over, we know that family planning, that dealing with family size, helping families to, uh, to manage their family size through a variety of means, including but not limited to abortion, actually can lift uh, families out of poverty and at the very least um, neuter some of poverty's most horrific effects, right? So when Obama actually list this ban, he is kind of actually a poverty reduction move. It's not, I don't think it was actually covered like that in the media, but it's actually a poverty reduction move. Um, and then first and foremost, he ordered the secret prison and detention camps closed. This is really, really tremendous. I, although the details have to be worked out, I mean, this is really tremendous. It brings America back into the civilized world in a way. Uh, oh, and one other thing, um, he created a White House Women's Council. I think this is the first thing that's ever been done. In as much as women constitute actually more than 50% of the population, it's high time that there was a council within the White House that examined the effect that various policies, um, that various government policies actually have on women and on girls. Because we know that while sexism is not what it used to be, there are a number of different ways that women and girls are differentially impacted negatively by, um, by government policies. And it's good to have 
a group of a group that's going to be paying attention to this closely. Right. So those are some of his, his successes. They signal a, a wave of openness. They signal a concern for traditional Democratic constituencies, labor and women uh, constituencies that are fundamentally important for our continued success as a nation. Right. But of course, the biggest challenge that he faces is that of the economy. So he took a uh, he took an approach that was much better than that of his predecessor in that he got out in front even before he was elected and talked to, and talked with people uh, from various um, backgrounds, talked with his supporters, talked with his detractors to try to get some sense of how best to handle the economy. And at no point have, well, although there have been uh, criticisms that he's been far more secretive on this issue than perhaps he could, we can easily imagine how his predecessor would have handled this issue had he still been in office, right? But with that said, it seems to me that the bailout is failing. So Robert Reich, uh, an economist that sometimes I agree with, sometimes not, he actually graded, gave Obama like an A in one area, B in another area, and an F on the bailout. I actually think he's right here. I don't think the bailout includes a, uh, enough stimulus. I think that Obama actually treated the automotive industry far different than he's treated the banking industry. And I think that's tragic given that in the automotive industry, we've got hardworking Americans. It's been the backbone for, uh, for the development of the middle class and we can actually see product, right? Whereas with banking, it's not clear that they actually create a product, rather they provide a service. And I think that the ways that they have actually um, created their profit really deserve a significant amount of scrutiny, much more scrutiny than I think that Obama's actually given, right? So that's one challenge, that he's treated these two industries, two really important industries with a different set of gloves, and I think that has consequences for how we go forward. That's one challenge. The other challenge is that he actually doesn't provide enough stimulus for working class and middle class Americans. And I don't have a lot of time left, so I'll just end with just a couple of examples. Um, I have a friend who works in uh, California, for the state of California, lives in Sacramento, purchased a house for uh, $400,000. That house is now worth less than half of that, right? So for him, it's not necessarily about when he, uh, if he leaves, it's just about when. And we all know several people in this circumstance. There's actually a city in California in which 90, over 90% 90 of the houses in that city or in that town are quote unquote underwater. That is, the homeowners owe more in the house than on what they're worth. I haven't yet seen anything that Obama's done that attempts to deal with that crisis. I mean, that's a signal crisis, right? I have a another friend who has no housing problems. She has no job problems necessarily. She's a tenured professor. But talking to her last night, she's got to pay for uh, a really serious operation or has to handle a really serious operation that her um, that a, a loved one has to deal with right and in normal circumstances well I want to say in normal circumstances in another circumstance if we had a more equitable health pro program she wouldn't have to deal with that right we be she'd be able to be taken care of and she'd be able to focus just on her job and on her family or on her husband right so what we have is a situation where it's clear that Obama is trying to deal with the economy, but he's dealing at, with it at such a high scale that the results don't quite trickle down to regular citizens yet. And I think that that's the fundamental challenge he's going to have going forward. Because to be honest, we, we've projected leftist ideas onto him, but he's really more liberal. So our challenge is to push him much more to the left. On that note, thanks for having me.